Hello and welcome back. Today, part two of the Raycon Instrument 9918. It's a frequency counter. We did some uh, testing on it. The channel A was working and the channel B was not working. And I will do a little recap what we find out so far and what needs to happen. So we followed the signal through the B channel. It was still here. This is a read relay. It is uh, part of the protection system, so you don't blow up the amplifier here if you put too much signal. And that is done here. And when there is too much signal here, it switches the relay here. But this all part worked. Here is a part of the limiter before it goes into the amp right here. And this is one of those Philips. I think it was the OM335. And what's easy to think that this one breaks because it happened very often. They are not that good, but it is uh, not always easy to find replacements. But when we start to measure the voltage, there was no voltage here in the first place. So then we went further in the circuit and it turned out that one of these tons, tantalum capacitors were uh, shorted. So I took that one out. And then we still didn't have power. This, this here is connected to the B switch. So it switches the B channel and then it puts power on the amplifier. And it turned out that the signal here was indeed going from 24 volts to I think 21 if I remember correct. Because if it switches here, this pulls it down and we get the voltage divider and we divide this 24. 4 volts over this 10k and 1.5 so it means it got here 21 volts so it should have been going open and get the voltage through to the amplifier and it didn't do that so what we did then is just shorted these two and then we had a readout on the B channel so I ordered this transistor and we're gonna replace that one today and then of course we're gonna clean the whole device Ray call instruments 9918. The display was a little bit loose. We it can sure use some uh, cleaning. We found out that it had uh, that the big oscillator option 0B 4B. It has, has an option the LF multiplier. We tested that one, that is also working. So, looking on the board. Here the signal comes in with the blue uh, coax. Then we have here the read relay. Here is the amplifier. And I think behind here was this uh, tantalum that we removed. And the power is switched with this transistor in the back here. So we need to remove the oscillator so we can have a better look. And uh, I ordered that one already. If I remember correct, I think it was here and we could see that the output pin had uh, nothing and this one had 24 and 24. And when we switched the B channel, we had 24 and one pin was switched to 21. So that means it should open and then it will put voltage to the amplifier. So I think I shorted these two pins and then we could see there was a readout, meaning that the amplifier still worked and that the B channel also was working. Okay, so if we measure here, we have the 24 volts in. Here we have the, the driver side, I think. And this is where the voltage divider is. And this is the output that goes to the amplifier. So we have here 24, 24. And the output to the amplifier is nothing. Now I switch to the B channel. B channel on. And now we still have the 24 on the power supply input. Then we have the voltage divider. We see that part that drives it works because now we have 21 volts. Well, that's more than a few volts, so it should open. And now on the output we still have nothing. So clear, this one is broken. So we're going to take this out and replace. I found a replacement already. They look very small, so I hope it is a real.
Okay, we've put the replacement in right here. I think that looks good. We can put back the oscillator. And then let's do some tests. So let's check that again. I get my ground point here. I get my 20 volts here. Power it on. Let's see. We have here 24 volts. That is the power supply. We have here the base. That's where it switches. Yes, it goes 0.7 down. Here we have the output to the amplifier, zero and 24 out. So that switches now. Uh, put some signal. Switch on uh, 50 megahertz on the. Uh, yeah. Input A. It should be able to do 50. Let's see. Yes, it does. The oscillator still needs to warm. Oh, it's 49. I touched it. So 50. Yeah, this is oscillator. Then we move to input B, which was not working. Is it working now? Yes, it is. Is it sensitive? I'm now at one volt peak peak. I probably should be able to go like 50 millivolts. Uh, I did 550 millivolts peak peak. Yeah, it's super sensitive. The amplifier works. If you can do this with 50 millivolts, cool. So it works up to uh, 50 megahertz, that is nice. But of course we want to go a lot higher. It says here it can go up to 560. But we know the Philips goes well above the 800. So let's just uh, try that. I have here my little uh, WBSG1. I think it is now in 190. 190, yes, indeed. Let's go a little bit uh, higher. 200 megahertz. Yep, 300. 400. Yeah, the oscillator I need to adjust. It's clear. 500. It should be able to do that. 600. No problem. It is stable. It's not missing counts. 700. 800. Cool. Can it go higher? 900? No, 900 is too much. 800 megahertz. Very cool. Down to the cleaning. Okay, the cleaning. Well, cleaning is usually the more time you spend, the more detail you do, the better it looks. And usually I would open it a lot further because we have this aluminium front, but it is in top of the frame. But that means I need to remove all the BNCs, all the switches, all the lights, and then I could clean the front plate. Very, very good. And also this I could polish a little bit better, the display. But there is one big thing why I don't want to do this, and that is this. I was thinking also I can unscrew this, and then I can at least get better to the display. But this, once you move it, it will break. So I'm not touching this. I've seen it in multimeters. It is always a bit scary. So I'll just try to clean it as good as you can without taking it apart. And people sometimes ask, do you use special stuff to clean? Well, actually not. This is just a kitchen cleaner. It is little clots and it has some uh, citrus in it. And I think maybe even a very tiny piece of uh, bleach. So it's really to, to, to clean your kitchen. 
And that is what I use most, just to get uh, the dirt out. You don't need always to use uh, alcohol or IPA, only when it is needed. I will try that. But first, just do it like that. And uh, just Windex, the blue liquid for your windows. It's also a little bit of a decreaser, but it won't, uh, it won't affect your letters or uh, it doesn't do much harm. So I prefer to use that first and only when it's really necessary I start to use the real chemicals. While the oscillator is heating, I can show a little bit what I did with the cleaning. And this is mostly Windex. You can see it's all back to its original shine. All the buttons, all the metal. It is just very multi-purpose and it works very well. Look at this. All back to its old shine. I thought it uh, would work up to uh, 800 megahertz because of the Philips, but it was uh, missing counts. So I switched it down to 700. I'm running it on external reference, and uh, this is doing it perfectly fine. So the 560 here, we can push it a lot further. I think this one also, we, we pushed it up to 140 instead of 70, I think, and it was no problem at all. I think it has been switched on now for 30 minutes and we can see we are down below the hertz already and it seems to be stable so we can get a little bit more of counts and digits. So we can adjust it here. I'm measuring here the output of the oscillator. So in the front I know also that it is of course a little bit too low because it counts too fast. And we have two trimmers right here. Let me I mean, I hope the light can, yeah. Here we have two trimmers. And I use, of course, my ceramic screwdriver. This is the coarse, this is the fine, but we need to have it flat on the table. I will do it very slowly because I'm in two seconds. Okay, that's a wrong way, so I turn the other way. Oh, it doesn't do much more. Oh, here it goes. It is adjust very, very nicely, I must say. I thought it was a simple trimmer, but it seems like a 10 turner. Look at this. This is an hertz, so we have 0, 02 hertz. And this is the course. Uh, Trimmer, imagine if I start doing the fine. Wow. This is amazing. So easy to adjust. Look at this. The oscillator is spot, spot on. So then if we look in the front, we should also have the frequency exactly. Yeah, look at this. Running on its own internal oscillator. This is 700 megahertz. This counter is cool. 
that's it the Regal Instruments 9918 with the stable 04B oscillator and the ease of what it adjusts is amazing you have to find in the core setting so running now on his own oscillator look at that super super stable yes the last digit is even on external reference sometimes what you miss but wow look at that thank you for watching hope to see you next time